Uh, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are on Kristiansand Airport in Norway and we are going to discuss how to properly um, refuel the airplane. Uh, <coughs> even if it is during turnaround or or let's say on early morning flight uh, while overnight. Uh, so um, uh, basically uh, the refueling panel on Boeing 737 uh, is located somewhere over here, okay? And uh, uh, there are um, there are uh, let's say uh, two methods how to refuel the fuel. Uh, mm, some airlines and uh, uh, some destinations um, in some destinations uh, we put in the first officer window uh, the numbers. Okay, uh, we have some cards and letters, numbers like a calendar and uh, it shows to refueling guy uh, how much uh, fuel we need for refueling. Another way it's on some airports uh, that it's, um, they have different, um, let's say, policy and uh, the refueling guy uh, just connect uh, the car uh, to the wing and, that, and the ground uh, the ground the the hose and uh, that's it so the captain has make uh, a refueling uh, like standing over there and putting their um, right numbers as you can see on the picture above how it looks like okay uh, it is it, there are the knobs and you you can tune uh, your uh, own value uh, which is desired what is important during the refueling uh, during the refueling, the Boeing basically says that uh, all you need to have for refueling the airplane is the battery. So, uh, because um, the protective circuit breakers are DC powered. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, this is okay. Uh, this is quite nice. Uh, but uh, imagine all the stuff, uh, ground services, uh, maintenance guys, uh, cabin crew members, and so on and so on. So how it looks like? Uh, first of all, we will start with the preliminary pre-flight procedure, um, and um, and make it uh, like the battery is okay. Alternate flap switch, uh, um, hydraulic panel is set, wipers park, geared down, three greens, uh, we set the parking brake for Captain Walk around, uh, okay, and we will perform the fire tests, and once uh, the fire tests are completed, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can put the uh, the airplane um, to the APU or uh, if you have the agreement uh, with the handling company uh, you can make a directly connect the GPU and then perform the fire tests okay uh, or how we performing fire tests is on my video on YouTube so please watch it and uh, there is everything stated about that so we may start the, the APU like this this one and uh, I will tell you uh, after preliminary procedure why it's important to have the preliminary procedure done uh, before the refueling. Okay, so we'll wait, wait just a little bit, just, just a few seconds. So, look at the cockpit, okay, we have APU on bus, we perform the fire test once again, as you can see wheel wall fire is it's okay, uh, we perform the cargo fire test, it's okay basically, so we are going PSIU, leading edge devices, IRSs, and um, now I'm going to a uh, very important part, um, 
of this section uh, this EC crew oxygen that's okay all the warning tests are okay and check all the circuit breakers uh, if there are any circuit breakers which are related to the um, fuel pumps for example or uh, related to the fuel in general speaking uh, that means that uh, we cannot refuel the airplane okay so that's why the preliminary procedure uh, has to be completed prior to um, refueling your airplane okay so once we check the circuit breakers are all, all okay uh, none of the circuit breakers are pop up uh, so um, uh, we may start the mm, start the refueling and mm, uh, and uh, the first what I would like to point out there are a few few steps and a few things which we are not allowed to do uh, while we are refueling okay first of all the first thing uh, it's when there is a thunderstorm over the airport uh, when there is thunderstorm over the airport we are not allowed to refuel the airplane uh, the second thing is, uh, if you look here, uh, we are not allowed to manipulate with APU switch and uh, fuel and um, fuel pump switches uh, during refueling. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, uh, we are not allowed to uh, use the engine start switches or an igniter switches. Okay. And then, then the last one is we cannot manipulate once we are refueling uh, with the circuit breakers which are related to the fuel okay and uh, the next step is uh, during the refueling uh, there can there can be uh, two procedures uh, one procedure is to alert uh, the refueling guy that we are performing the fire tests uh, that's why uh, we are first making preliminary and and then we are refueling uh, and the second one that the fire tests are done so we cannot perform the fire tests uh, without warning the um, refueling guy or or without any any warning to for example captain maintenance personnel and so on and so on so first of all i will offer to you make a preliminary pre-flight procedure with the fire tests and then you can perform the refueling and once the refueling is completed you may start the preliminary pre-flight procedure that means that um, you can uh, for example uh, if you have uh, if you would like to um, take from this tank uh, fuel you may open the cross valve and make it like this one and um, you are saving the life of the APU um, fuel pump mm, so that's it um, so that's another reason uh, and then you can proceed like uh, standard scan for procedure and going from left and now you can uh, recycle the igniter switches from uh, right to left or left to right regarding if you are uh, flying from your home base or from your destination turnaround airport okay uh, so uh, this is one thing uh, how we are performing the refueling and now uh, there are mm, uh, if you are on the airport uh, sometimes uh, it's written on Jepson chart how is it with refueling with passengers okay because some airports uh, has strictly uh, forbidden um, uh, to make an uh, boarding uh, with, re with refueling make boarding passengers uh, while we are refueling okay they are strictly prohibited and uh, we are not allowed to do so so we have to wait until the airplane it's uh, uh, it's uh, mm, it's refueled and all the refueling procedure it's uh, completely done uh, on some airports uh, they are valid the EASA operational procedures which allow to uh, refuel the airplane uh, while uh, making a uh, boarding of passengers uh, but you have to realize a few things okay so we will make it for example um, I will give you example okay on some airports you need the fire assistance car on some airports you don't need the fire assistant car uh, but anyway the ASA ops uh, tells to us um, that uh, 
I will put it like actions, services, uh, request refueling track, OK. And for example, we have uh, mm, we have two tones uh, on board, so uh, we are performing a short flight. So uh, we will put into the window uh, 5.0, and that's the sign for refueling guy that it will be uh, five tones exactly. OK. And uh, once you can see, uh, mm, or let's say, or let's say like this one, uh, when we are performing the boarding, uh, for example, I will put it like this one. I will put touched passengers of 100, uh, request second stairs, and start boarding. Okay, and once you can see uh, that, uh, as you can see. Uh, now the hose is connected. It should be ground ground cable to ground the airplane uh, to discharge the static electric. Okay, uh, it should be uh, somewhere over here of the ram door or whatever the metal part of the airplane is. Okay, um, and uh, right now the ASA ops tells to, uh, tells to us that. It should be uh, one uh, one crew member in the cockpit. Uh, that means that it's always because captain is performing the walk around. It's always the co-pilot. Okay. Uh, so um, so we'll start the refueling and the co-pilot. Uh, what is his responsibility? His responsibility is to sit here. Okay put it either to the speaker or uh, put the headset on and make via PA and tell to the cabin crew that cabin crew refueling is completed. This is very important and very crucial because uh, the cabin crew um, arms the slide of, of, of the uh, of the doors uh, which are uh, servicing doors and those doors are uh, locating uh, right here as you can see and arm the grid bar and uh, in order uh, to be prepared for evacuation or let's say if you have the stairs for uh, a rapid uh, disembarkation of the airplane okay so uh, that's why uh, one crew member should should be in the cockpit, uh, and his his um, responsibility or her responsibility is uh, not the PA. Uh, it's uh, to tell to the cabin crew via PA that the uh, cabin crew refueling in progress, and uh, uh, then uh, connect uh, via external jack. Uh, uh, for the ground handling personnel uh, in order to receive, uh, mm, um, for example, message that uh, we have we have the fire on board. So, uh, as we have the fire on board, uh, you just press the PA, tell the uh, uh, cabin crew rapid disembarkation or, or cabin crew evacuation, evacuation. Okay, and that means that uh, we have fire uh, while we were uh, refueling. Uh, another way, another thing, and another duty is uh, to call to the ATC and ask Im for emergency services uh, for the firefighting cars and so on and so on. Uh, so, uh, this was the basic explanation. And what is very important to have fasten belts to off position. Okay, never put it into on position unless refueling is not completed. Okay, so. As you can see, uh, we are successfully refueling. Shortly, we reach uh, our target. Okay, and uh, now what is a very important thing, and uh, this thing it's um, mm, has its common sense, but uh, um, yeah, okay. So we will wait for uh, refueling. As you can see, we have the nice current on the airlines. Uh, uh, of Slovakia and company go to sky uh. but I can see that there is a wrong registration number oh, okay <laughs> so it's Air Explorer now go to sky it's Air Explorer uh, okay so um, 
now uh, we are almost done and uh, what is important uh, right now okay uh, so uh, the refueling guy uh, will tell you uh, for example uh, the refueling uh, it's completed uh, captain or first officer uh, via headset if he if he is connected into the jack if he's not connected he will show you that uh, with sign uh, that uh, refueling is completed and he will disconnect okay and uh, uh, once the hose is disconnected as you can see right now uh, in only in this case uh, you can tell via PA cabin crew refueling completed okay and uh, put the fasten belts into the on position okay and you, you may perform uh, all the all the things for example switch to the igniters to the left side and uh, and uh, manipulate with the circuit circuit breakers manipulate with the fuel pumps for example like this one if you would like to mm, suck the fuel for APU from uh, right side okay and so on and so on and what does it mean for the cabin crew uh, it means uh, once again uh, I don't have been did it but uh, anyway uh, it it means uh, for the cabin crew that uh, mm, he will uh, or let's say uh, she should disarm uh, this grid bar okay but shoot okay um, uh, if you're not uh, using the services doors uh, it should be armed and, uh, and cross check for takeoff so uh, basically uh, that was the explanation uh, how to make a refuel and now you can uh, switch uh, to the active ATC frequency and basically uh, that's it so I hope you like the video and uh, I hope you learned something new so uh, have a safe flights and see you next time soon bye